Okay, so that's the first Minnesota monument, but we're not here to talk about that, although we can sometime. We're going to take you to the Willard Monument, which is way out there. And if you ever discover it by yourself, oh boy. Garmin says it takes two, it's two tenths of a mile and uh, ninth, one penny's worth of gas. Uh, that is if you're driving a car. So it's way out there. We're going to show you how to get there. Um, so we're just going to go for it. And always be sure to check yourself for ticks when you go out in these long tramps through, um, you know, this kind of stuff. So, uh, yes, I'm fairly certain barely anyone goes out to this monument for a good reason, I'm sure, that there's no path out here. So maybe you who are watching this video can help make a path out here. Okay, GPS says it's more of the last time we were there we put it in our GPS so we wouldn't forget how to get there because Don't as, try this at home. Yeah, try it out here. <laughs> um, lovely butterflies everywhere. There's some nice wildflowers, it's real pretty. Again, the ground here is uneven, so watch your step. And you're gonna have to, here's a ditch here, fairly large one. Yes. Good eye. And you're gonna have to um, cross that fence up there, you see that? That is a requirement. So, you gotta be a little spry, I guess. And so, a little bit of history to go along with this. Willard, the, the, the monument we're going to see is the of the alleged spot where Colonel Willard was wounded by some potentially friendly fire, some accounts say. Uh, he is in command of a brigade here at Gettysburg, and he was sent by either General Meade or Hancock to prevent or to uh, stop Longstreet's massive assault way over there. So now we're climbing this Should fence. I hold it for you? Or? Oh no, I got it. Okay. Ah. So we've climbed the fence. And let's see, it's kind of around by that tree, I believe, roughly speaking. So here again, we got these massively tall weeds. So again, watch your step. So anyway, Willard's brigade was sent from way over there by the um, Ziegler's Grove which is where all his regiment monuments are. He was sent over here to stop Longstreet's attack. And I believe Willard's brigade collided with, I want to say Wofford's brigade. And there was um, an engagement, probably happened out around here somewhere. Um, Willard's brigade was known as the Harper's Ferry Brigade because they were the whole brigade was captured at Harper's Ferry but I think they uh, got exchanged through the prisoner exchange program and they're back. And uh, so yeah, and I, I believe they end up fighting some of the people that captured them at Harper's Ferry. So it's kind of an interesting twist of fate or whatever. And so yeah, you gotta be nuts if you're coming out here by yourself to see this. But that, that's what we did. Did you hear that artillery in the distance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, today's July 3rd, so there's some reenacting going on, as you would guess. Where is it from here? Is it, are we headed in the right direction? Uh, I see more of it. That it's way? I'm thinking in that little depression there. All right. Beyond the, beyond the fences. Every now and then there's some rocks here. You okay? See, look at this. I already I got I a thorn. I already got a tick. Bam. Mm, I hope it's gone. Yeah. And... I think we're good. Okay. So yes, if you ever encounter any rocks, good place to flick off some ticks. Not with your middle finger, but... Get, never mind. Okay. So as I recall, it's again somewhere around this tree up here. Oh, 
Oh look, there goes a bird. Lots of wildlife out here. And uh, since we're just walking, I'll talk about the first Minnesota, whose monument you can see way back there. Earlier in the day before Willard's Brigade came along, don't know what that is. Hmm. Before Willard's Brigade came along, First Minnesota was basically the only regiment between 1,700 Confederate soldiers in the heart of the Union line. And General Hancock says to the commander of the First Minnesota, Colonel, take those colors. And so it's basically 300 something guys going against 1,700 guys. And the First Minnesota charges and they just get annihilated, but they stop the Confederate advance and really save the day. Um, but they suffer 80 something percent casualties and it's just not a good day for them. And my, my dad's directing me over this direction. And I think, oh, I think I can see it. It's just, we gotta climb another fence here. Or I think you can go around this one. Oh boy. And when we get over there, we'll, I'll show you how far you will have come. Because this, this is a strenuous walk out here. There it is. I can see it. So you gotta come around this little fence so you can either climb over it if you're hardcore or just go around the side like me. And uh, there it is. You can see it in the distance there. So what this monument over here represents is this is the approximate spot where Colonel Willard was wounded by an artillery shell. Some accounts say fired, uh, friendly fire from all the way back there. And here we are. This monument, I'm guessing, does not get visited often, and you can see why. Here it is. This is one of the most remote places on the battlefield you'll ever see. Get a good look at it. <sighs> Erected by the survivors of the 125th New York, 1888. Colonel Willard was killed. Oh, he was killed. My bad. I've been saying he was wounded this whole time. Forgive me. He was killed. So, as you can see, well, you can't even see the car. It's, that's the Pennsylvania Memorial there. And the first Minnesota Memorial is right around there. Yeah, I really can't see it. So, I mean, good luck getting out here. If you ever do, send me an email. Yeah, something like that. Uh -oh. So, there it is.